Manito, one of the most controversial, hated, and loved characters in Dragon Ball Super, and to me, the Yoda of Dragon Ball. Today, I am here to talk about Manito and his role within the Granola arc, and the creativity that went behind the birth of his character, so let's jump right into it. So, when Manito is first introduced to us in the story, it's on Planet Serial, the planet of the Cerulean's. His adoptive grandson, Granola, shows up and brings some water to drink, and it's revealed to us, I remember when this first happened, you know, and it was revealed to us that Manito was a Namek, like a new Namek character. It was actually pretty mind-blowing for us whenever we first, you know, found out. I think people kind of take that for granted. So yeah, Manito is a Namek that lives on Planet Serial with his adoptive grandson, Granola. And at the point that they're introduced in the story, we don't really know much about either of them. All we know is that Granola is a bounty hunter who has a hunger for revenge that's recently sprouted up within him as a result of hearing from Elec, one of his employers, that Frieza is in fact alive and he, he has a grudge against Frieza for sending the Saiyans to destroy his people and he's coming home from finding out all this information to his adoptive grandfather Manito. As Manito and Granola sit down to have a meal together, Manito points out after Granola comments on the fact that the Shigarians gave him extra water for Manito, Manito comments on the fact that the Shigarians are very sweet to them. Granola however feels that they probably feel guilty about moving on to the planet after his race was wiped out, basically communicating to us, the reader, that Granola still has a grudge. And Manito is just thankful for the life that they have together. And you can, you'll notice he tries to reinforce this narrative on Granola multiple times as the arc unfolds. Granola is hesitant to admit it, but he, he really doesn't have any complaints. He has a pretty great life. He has an adoptive grandfather who cares a lot about him. His planet is populated by people who are very good to him. And that's something that the arc really tries to draw attention to here. So Manito asks Granola if he's got any more jobs lined up. Well, he's got some time off because he's just found out that Frieza has come back to life. Manito is shocked to hear this. And Granola realizes that must be why a lot of these criminals are laying low. Which is why he has a shortage of labor. Manito is very privy to basically assume that Elec will more than likely put a bounty on Frieza's head. So, Manito has already got the idea in his head that Granola more than likely will end up going out after Frieza, whether it be his own will or Elix. Granola is aware, though, that heaters aren't exactly in a hurry to take on Frieza. Manito basically is like, don't even try it. Frieza is way more powerful than you. He's way more advanced than you. And Granola tells his grandfather that he may need to rely on that and the word that is highlighted because it's revealed to us within the story that granola is talking about none other than a dragon ball the decorative item that the dragon ball is sitting on is very reminiscent of grandpa gohan's room where goku grew up uh, and also had an adoptive grandfather so here we start to see a connection between goku and granola we get to, we start to see that they that there is a commonality between the way they've grown up. But not just Goku and Granola, Vegeta and Granola as well, because Vegeta, much like Granola, is a victim of Frieza. So this character is a combination of Goku and Vegeta in a lot of ways in terms of his overall story, which makes him an interesting character. And that's something that they do multiple times in this arc. All of these characters are derivatives of other characters. Which, that's normally the case. Dragon Ball is infamous for doing that anyway. But in this case, they do it in a very creative way that actually serves the plot very well. Naito's wisdom as a Namek comes into full play here as he expresses to Granola that the Dragon Balls are not for taking revenge. Granola seems like he's heard this before because he tells Naito that he knows that and that it doesn't really matter anyway because he doesn't have the other Dragon Ball. Naito is quick to say, darn right. It's been lost for 40 years, likely to never be seen again. Granola talks about how he had to search the entire planet for just one tiny ball like that. Manito goes on to state that the Dragon Balls began as a part of a ritual to celebrate brave Namekian warriors. Which makes sense because only a brave Namekian warrior who solves problems with their own power can pass the test of the Dragon Balls. But we'll get to that a little bit more soon. Manito states that the Dragon Balls are not meant to fulfill any wish. And, and that also suggests... That whatever wish these brave, noble Demekian warriors made suits the correct narrative as to what wishes are supposed to be made on the Dragon Balls. And that is a very important detail here that I think a lot of people overlook. And we get this transition to Namek where 
we are given a lesson about the Dragon Balls. So essentially we learn here that the Dragon Balls are different sizes, different number. It all depends on what the Namek decides to do with the material they need to create Dragon Balls. Originally the wishes were meant as rewards for bold warriors who sought out the Dragon Balls in times of great suffering. Which suggests that the overall purpose of the Dragon Balls is to maintain the overall well-being of planet Namek or whatever planet it's meant to ensure its survival, right? That's a very important detail for this arc. A lot of people read these rules and they they kind of glance over what they actually mean. And what we're actually being told here is the Dragon Balls are actually used as a means of survival. They're actually used... And, and, and the trials that they put you through are a test to see whether or not you really are a noble, brave warrior who is worthy of using the Dragon Balls to ensure the survival of your planet and everyone that you care about. The young Namekian student asks if other planets have Dragon Balls, and the guru here states that it's certainly possible on planets where other Namics reside. It's like Earth, right? And this is the same Namek that was rescued by Vegeta, I'm pretty sure, which makes this pretty cool. So another student asks, if there are Namics on other planets. The Guru goes on to state that most likely, but they don't know for sure. And then they go on to state that they move to this universe from another realm, which was another jarring and shocking revelation whenever we heard about it the first time. The Guru goes on to state that he's heard that some have settled far from planet Namek. In my opinion, and this is just a theory, but in my opinion, I think that the Namics actually come between the space between worlds because it would make a lot of sense as to why they can inhabit so many places uh, if you remember during the universe 6 versus universe 7 tournament the tournament took place in a space between universe 6 and universe 7 and that is where the last dragon ball was so it stands to reason that it's very possible that the dynamics are actually from the space between universes in terms of the overall narrative purpose for the dragon balls this arc really goes over that but I'll probably do a separate video going into that in more detail. But Minato goes on to explain that a couple dozen Namekians used to live on Planet Serial, but now it's just him. And that when he dies, the Dragon Balls go with him. Granola goes on to state that it may be possible for them to wish back his kind from 50 years ago. Minato goes on to state, well, what will happen to the Shigarians if you make that wish? So then Granola goes on to say that then if that's the case, Frieza and his army ha have to be eliminated. Minato goes on to tell him again, like he said, revenge is not the way. It only gives rise to new ma to new enemies, new threats, and causes problems for your future. Granola goes on to state that his grandfather's right. And Minato goes on to tell him that he should just give up on the Dragon Balls and enjoy the lot that he's been handed in his life. He should just be grateful for what he has, essentially. Minato decides to turn in for the night. Granola actually discovers the second Dragon Ball on TV that very night. And to be honest, yeah, it kind of seems sudden. But he doesn't have a Dragon Radar. And this, it, the way this is set up, it seems it seems jarring to us. It seems like it's just way too convenient. But you have to understand that that Dragon Ball's been sitting there ever since Granola was a child, and they've obviously had multiple conversations about the Dragon Balls. So even though you know it does come around the time that he's wanting to use the Dragon Balls, this planet has had a very long time to try and find the second Dragon Ball. So it's not super surprising that they would find it. So Granola steals the Dragon Balls and decides to use them to wish himself to be the most powerful being in the universe. That wish comes with a cost, and the cost is to sacrifice his lifespan. So this just goes to show that Granola's intentions are being corrupted by his need for revenge, but overall he's not a selfish person. He's willing to sacrifice his lifespan in order to get his revenge because he feels that that is the right thing to do. He genuinely feels that he's correct in his ideas, and that's the reason that he is so headstrong, and that's the reason that he's so quick to jump to conclusions and, and make irrational decisions, because he believes that he is 1,000% correct in the way that he's looking at this, at this whole situation. So when Manito realizes the Dragon Ball is gone, he comes outside to notice that Granola has changed, he's wished to be the most powerful in the universe, and that he sacrificed his lifespan to do it. Manito warns him one more time that brandishing that sort of power and making all of these foolish decisions will cost them dearly. He tries to tell him again, being irrational and acting pretty much like a Saiyan <laughs> in a lot of ways is not going to reward him. It's going to do nothing but cause issues for him and his grandfather and the Shigarians. After Granola meets Goku, 
Goku tries to show him that, you know, his intentions are pure and that he's not Saiyan in the sense that Granola perceives Saiyans. Goku's purity is in full view. Granola should be able to see what kind of person Goku is, but he's blinded by his need for revenge. Vegeta blatantly points out that Granola is acting no different than a Saiyan. And this is this is a perp this is something they do on purpose narratively to show you that the way Saiyans behave the way that they do things similar in a similar way to granola is would cost them their lives if they use the dragon balls that's the reason that it's set up like this so after the battle's over manito shows up again to basically explain to granola and everyone else that he was in fact saved by goku's father bardock now despite the fact that bardock saved granola he makes it a point to say multiple times that he doesn't even understand why he's doing it it's a subconscious thing. He associates Granola and Weasley with Gine and Goku, but it's a biological thing. It's not something that he's putting a lot of thought into. It's just a feeling that comes with the association within his brain, cross-connecting Goku, Granola, and Gine and Weasley. Also, they make it a point to show before Bardock leaves that he associates Kakarot specifically with himself. So, there is a lot of veiled selfishness in Bardock's actions. Time passes, Granola fights a new and improved gas, we get a lot of revelations in the story, and Granola is encouraged by Vegeta after some significant failure against gas that he should use his own strength to solve his problems, and if he really wants to get his revenge, he needs to do it by using his own power. Unfortunately, this is bad advice on Vegeta's part because this ends up going into the fight with the intentions of revenge is the reason that Granola almost loses his sight and almost gets killed by gas. He basically pulls a Vegeta and that costs him dearly. He has a near-death experience as a result of the effect that Vegeta had on his personality. Later on, Goku tries to express to Gas, specifically, because Gas is also a representation of this idea of revenge, that he shouldn't listen to his brother and he should do what he wants. But Gas makes it clear that he respects his brother and his will is absolute, and that the reason he wants to work for his brother is because his brother also serves his best interest. So his brother serves as a means of ensuring that he achieves his revenge. We cut to the Bardock flashback. We see that Bardock... Although he does want to protect Granola and Manito, his real intentions are made clear. He just wants to defeat Gas for his own pride as a Saiyan. He beats down an enemy when he wants to, and nobody tells him what to do. He does things because he wants to do them, and the story makes it a point to really hammer this point home, because a lot of Ardok's selfish actions are veiled in selflessness. It's sort of an illusion, so to speak. We're supposed to perceive what Bardock's doing as sort of selfless and heroic, but deep down, he's actually a very, very, very selfish person. And Bardock openly makes the choice to stay and fight Gas, not for any other reason other than to survive the battle and defeat Gas because that's what he wants. Bardock pays a huge price for this action, however, because just like Manito warned Granola, Bardock brandishes a sort of power in front of Elig and, and company that would eventually be his doom and not just his doom, but his entire planets. Because as Bardock defeats Gas, Frieza shows up. Frieza overhears the conversation between Bardock and Elec and uses that as a means of discovering his plans. He just serves as an example of why Frieza should not trust the Saiyans. So this one decision that Bardock makes has a huge toll on everyone around him. And it's a selfish decision. And that's what the story is trying to portray to you is that Despite the fact that, you know, Bardock did some selfless things, he was overall a selfish person. Which can have a negative effect on your life in general, but it can really have a negative effect on your life if you use the Dragon Balls. Because the Dragon Balls actually put you through trials to test whether or not you are worthy of your one miracle. You get a scene very reminiscent of Goku falling from the cliff whenever he went out with Grandpa Gohan. And... Naito comes out, heals Bardock, and he, survive, he survives and lives to fight another day, but he leaves his scouter behind. Eventually, Goku and Vegeta overhear the recording on the scouter, and they get a better understanding of what Saiyan Pride actually is. 
It's really just honing in on your instinctual love for battle. That's really what Saiyan Pride is. It's, there's not supposed to be any ideas behind it. It's not about destroying. It's all about survival. Your biological and instinctual need to survive. And that's really what the story is trying to portray here. Is that Bardock was special because he was able to throw himself into battle. Allow his blood to start pumping. Which put his body in a position to where whenever it feels endangered. He could grow and improve as a fighter. And that's the reason he is a survivor. That's the reason he survives. The reason for this is by honing in on your instincts. You are not doing anything with any intention. So think of it as sort of a hack when you use the Dragon Balls. If you can make decisions with no intentions, even if the decision is inherently selfish due to the need to survive, even though you are using, even though you are making a decision to kill someone else for the betterment of yourself, you're doing it because you're honing in on your body's need to survive. When Bardock makes his wish on the Dragon Balls, he goes out of his way to reaffirm to us, the viewer, that selfish wishes can only bring about doom. And that Bardock had the right idea because his wish actually was to ensure hope for the next generation. It was to create hope for the future. One very overlooked thing about this wish is if we listen to Kami's words in the original Dragon Ball carefully, it's not free. The wishes are not free. You have to go through trials in order to prove yourself. And those trials normally have a purification process overall. And that explains why this wish is so important narratively to Toriyama. Because it essentially makes Goku the result of the effect of the Dragon Balls. And not in the sense that it saved his life. But that it constantly puts him through trials in order to prove himself. And as a result he reaps the benefit of the Dragon Balls. And uses them in a way very similar to the Namekian warriors that Manito mentions to Granola. So after a long and hard battle with Gas. Nola wakes up from his near-death experience and saves Goku from gas. He charges up a blast that he's sure gas will not be able to withstand without losing consciousness. And then we get this cool little homage to Bardock basically saying that he only fights when he wants to beat his opponent down. And Goku basically says that no one has given up on defeating him. After a little help from the monkey awakened to emptiness, typical Star Wars fashion uses aim assists and puts gas down. However, he makes it very clear he is very quick to make it known that he did not kill Gas and that he is no longer in any of this for revenge. Nola communicates to Goku and Vegeta that he's he became the strongest in the universe through sacrificing his lifespan and that the last attack that he used to put Gas down may have used up a large portion of his life force. Which goes to show you that Granola is still willing to sacrifice his life to do the right thing. After some healing from Manito, Manito is attacked from behind by Gas. Gas overhears Granola basically say that he's no longer out for revenge, and this is the perfect test to see whether or not he will go through with that whole idea. First thing Granola does is go check on his grandfather, and that is supposed that is a that is something that is done purposely narratively within the story. Even whenever Frieza shows up, Granola is only worried about checking on his grandfather. He he has learned to appreciate the life that he had, like Manito suggested to him at the start of the story. When Frieza shows up, Gas is so hell-bent on revenge that the first thing he does is lose control of himself and attack, and as a result, he is destroyed right in front of everyone. Elec is also destroyed. This is the consequences of using the Dragon Balls incorrectly, and that is the entire narrative purpose of this arc, to give you two examples of using the Dragon Balls correctly and not using them correctly. And that's why it was so important that Granola stayed with Manito, tried to help him survive because he no longer has impure intentions. He has developed pure intentions through the trials that the Dragon Balls put him through. Granola, as a result of his purity, is rewarded by Whis with a miracle. His grandfather is restored to him. His planet is not destroyed. And we all know that if Granola, just, if Granola decided to attack Frieza, his planet would have been gone. So Granola actually is level and clear-headed here. He's actually making the right decisions and he's going to reap the benefit of making those decisions. However, he cannot make up for the rash decisions he's made in the past. He can only make the best of them. Now, looking back on Manito's character, it's very clear the inspiration for his character is the combination of Grandpa Gohan and Kami with a little bit of Yoda thrown in. Much like Goku and Grandpa Gohan, Manito's intentions were to purify Granola 
and push him in the right direction from the very beginning. The difference is that unlike Goku, Granola is not a, a character who shares the traits of an animal or an instinctual creature. Personality traits that Grandpa Gohan imprinted onto Goku stick so well because he is animal-like. He's an instinctual creature. He follows his instincts. When he wants to fight strong guys, he's doing it because he has an instinctual biological urge to do it. Grandpa Gohan managed to subvert that personality trait into a pure desire rather than an ego-driven need to destroy and conquer everything around him. Kami is the one who actually points out to us, the reader, that Goku is actually the way he is for a purpose. The entire reason that the Dragon Balls continue to exist within the story, specifically on Earth, is because Goku is a prime example of a mortal who follows the prerequisites to correctly use the Dragon Balls due to the pure nature he developed on Earth. Essentially, Granola threw himself into the process that the Dragon Balls put you through in order to purify you. And that's the reason that Granola ended up being purified, despite the fact that Manito tried for years to help guide him in the right direction. It actually took misusing the Dragon Balls to, for him to actually learn his lesson. Whereas Goku, he never had to go through that. He was imprinted with the personality traits from the beginning to do what he needed to do to correctly use the Dragon Balls. And Manito as a character is underrated in the sense that he really is a combination of Kami and Grandpa Gohan. Manito even says at the end of the Granola arc that he doesn't believe that the planet should have Dragon Balls anymore. And that is a mirroring of what Kami said to Goku when he said that the planet should have Dragon Balls because someone like Goku existed there. It really goes to show you that the narrative purpose of the Dragon Balls, when you think about how Manito, Grandpa Gohan, and Kami are characterized, are to either destroy or purify mortals based on their actions once they use the Dragon Balls. The Dragon Balls create trials that if they succeed and do the right thing through them, they're rewarded heavily. But if they do the wrong thing, they're destroyed. So in that sense, Manito is a really underrated and underappreciated character. The creativity that went into creating a Namek Grandpa Gohan combination and the way that it goes to serve the overall narrative purpose of the Granola arc was a great move. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.